Hi guys, welcome to the show today. I'm going to be talking to Ross Cunningham. Ross is an absolutely fantastic guy. Um, done a lot of great things. I don't know if you've seen his posts recently, things like the, the BBC Social, uh, the Social, and uh, his website, Mountains Men Minds. Um, it's all in this uh, uh, broadcast itself. I'm going to share just an introduction to Ross through this uh, uh, channel, and I'll just show you um, a bit about him uh, in the beginning. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this okay. And this is our reintroduction. This is something that Ross did for the, the BBC Social um, about uh, uh, Munro's and uh, his wee Westy, Dex. The challenge you're pushing yourself, the question, like, why am I doing this? But once you get to the top of Munro's, it's a great feeling. It's a sense of achievement. My name is Ross Cunningham, I'm from Lynn Rothis in Fife, and one of my favourite hobbies is to go uh, hiking up Scotland mountains. In August and September 2017, uh, I went through depression. Um, it's something that I hadn't gone through before, and it's something I thankfully haven't gone through since, but it's obviously a really hard time. It can feel you're drowning, it can feel just, it's a really horrible, horrible thing to go through, and a lot of the hobbies and things that you have, um, you just can't lose interest in them. Doing the exercise helps you really to try and get into a better place, kind of mentally, and lots of endorphins and things that come out from exercise um, that was really beneficial and so when I kind of got into that my friend um, recommended that I join her to go hiking up um, Monroe's and that's how I got into the Monroe wagon. So Dex is my eight-year-old dog, he's a Westie and he loves hiking, he's the one that's, that's dragging me up around this half the time. He's got wee legs so as much as he wants to do the, the whole walk um, there's times I've got to lift him up, rescue him from falling into a bog or about to carry him over a river while I'm getting totally soaked just so he can kind of make it over okay. He's a creepy character, and I think a lot of people quite like to see pictures of him uh, when I post them on social media, um, especially Instagram, to see him at the top of uh, some of Scotland's highest mountains with some beautiful landscapes in the background. Um, I think a lot of people quite like that. From getting into hiking, I've really been getting out most weekends. A few of my friends that have came along have been getting into hiking themselves as well, so it's nice to kind of to, to pass it on and encourage other people to, to get involved in it. Over 2018, I managed to get to the top of uh, 70 Monroes. It's a long way away getting to 282 Monroes. I'm still over 200 away from that final target, but I think, yeah, once I can do it, which I will, I think the next challenge will be to do more mountains like this in Scotland. Living in Scotland, I've realised how lucky I am and how lucky people in Scotland are to live in one of the most beautiful countries in the world, which Scotland clearly is. I would encourage people to, to get out and explore Scotland, to see parts of it that they've maybe never seen before. Uh, hiking's a great way to do that, sites you've never seen before. There's some beautiful landscapes up in Scotland's mountains that you just simply wouldn't see. You need to go to the top of Mount to see it. For anybody that's going through things like depression, it's just that it's a great escape and it's going to help you. It's going to help you clear your head. I mean, that's fantastic. So um, I just want to welcome on the show, uh, Ross Cunningham. Hi, Ross. How are you? Hi there. I'm good. How are you doing, Jim? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So so let me just, uh, who is Ross Cunningham? You know, who are you? Where have you come from? And, you know, tell us all about yourself. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess. Um, and first of all, just to say with that with that video, it was uh, put together by um, my good friend Gavin Hugh, uh, Midget Bite Media, which is a, a video production business in and Fife, uh, you did a great job with that video. Um, just get in, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a Fifer, born in Kirkcaldy, uh, grew up in Glenrothes, and um, where I live just now. Um, went to Stirling University, I went to Glenrothes College to do video and television production, and then I went to uh, University of Stirling to film media there, and then I did a master's in film studies there. And then following that, um, I started up a video production business doing uh, videos for sports clubs including the Five Flyers, um, and then I, I got involved doing some work with St. Johnston Football Club, um, who I got a, who I got a, a job with um, after after doing a, a good a good turn with them, and uh, was a media and comms manager for a few years. I went to work in politics, working for MPs and MSPs, um, and then I'm now back working at St. Johnston Football Club as, as the media and comms, comms manager. And I suppose that, that's career-wise, but in terms of, uh, yeah, what I really enjoy is exploring Scotland and over the last three and a half years as that kind of that video um, demonstrates um, my, my big passion is the outdoors and and discovering Scotland but not just not just Scotland in terms of the, like the highlands for the Munros but obviously this year um, I've had a, a great opportunity to explore Fife. Fife's a, a beautiful place one of the most beautiful parts parts of the world and um, this year's really been the opportunity to, to explore what's on on my doorstep. Yeah so so how did it all come about though you know how did all this come about in terms of the mountains men mind? You know where where does that all come from? 
Yeah, so as, as kind of said in the video, um, yeah, I went through depression um, three and a half years ago now, roughly, and hill walking was really one of the big kind of saviors for me. It was something that gave me a, a real focus. It gave me something. There's so many things with hill walking that just there's like a huge benefit. You meet new people. You're seeing parts of Scotland you've never seen before. I suppose at the time when when I was going through depression, it gave me. I found it really hard to concentrate um, on maybe and try and switch off because my mind was just um, just a, re a really bad, really bad place at, at, that, at that time, and I couldn't even like read a book. I couldn't watch a film. It was really hard just to like to try and switch off from from kind of how I was feeling. But Munros and, and mountains and hills. And actually, I started off with the, with the hills when I was going through depression. I was going up the Lowland Hills in Fife. Um, I just gave myself an objective to to get to the top of Falkland Hill from from where I'm staying in Glenrothes and, and get back and. And then I go into the Munros, and I think with the Munros, like the mountains, hills, it just gives you that objective. You can look towards it. You can be walking up towards it. You can think about other things. It's hard, but you've got that focus. You've got that drive. You've got that objective to get to the top of the hill, yeah. and then to get up there and get back down again. And what I realised quite quickly was once I got back down again, I felt a lot better than when, when I started going up. So I just got into a habit of going up every weekend, and that just became it. Just has now become a big part of my life. Um, yeah. There. And, do you think focusing on they, they used to focus on the, the the task at hand and think just oh I've got to climb all the way up that hill <laughs> and it's like did, when you, did you kind of feel you were trying to put yourself off sometimes in the beginning and you thought well I better just go and do it um I think like yeah that, that actually there was times actually going up there'd be times especially like initially when I was yeah first started going through depression at the start of it there was times I'd maybe go up a hill or try to go up a hill and then I'd lose that motivation. I'd maybe get halfway up or a third of the way up and I'm just like, I can't I can't do this. Um, I'm just not feeling it to the end, come back down. And um, yeah. I think over time I managed to kind of push myself on it. It just it's a simple focus. It's a really simple one. I'm gonna mm -hmm. to get to a hill and come back down. And, and sorry, I didn't ask I actually answer your question earlier. Uh, mountains men minds. Um I suppose in the back of that BBC video, lots of people from across Scotland but around the world as well, like hundreds of people got in touch with me through various means to to say they like the video or they liked uh, decks in the video like the mountains and things and um, a lot of people said about how maybe they went through mental mental health issues in the past or, or still go through it and and sent and said how maybe the hill uh, sorry the video inspired them to to take up hill walking and i really love that feeling of actually inspiring other people and helping other people who may be in similar situations to to what i was in and so i thought with the website i could hopefully try to broaden that and the idea with it was to obviously with that BBC yeah. video, my opportunity to share my story, um, and I, I, but I knew a lot of people through Hillwalking that had kind of similar stories. How they got into Hillwalking was kind of th through similar, um, similar ways or uh, related to mental health. So it allowed people that I know quite well and people that I had met before to, to to share their blogs, their stories on on the website to hopefully inspire other people to to get into Hillwalking as well. So that's where the, the idea for the website came from. Do you do you think do you think it's the open air then that helps people? It's just the sights and the sounds and engagement with nature. Do you think that's what does it? That's a huge thing. Uh, yeah, definitely got to go in nature. I think that there's like lots of studies and things, um, like social prescribing as well, that's been done to encourage people to just get outdoors. Um, I think that for a lot of people, I suppose. <laughs> In my situation, anyway, I think that you can work at work. Obviously, have have a job that you love, but you can maybe be like based in office, maybe indoors all the time. Whereas I think, like as humans, we're actually really used to being outdoors. That's like kind of a, a primal need is to to be outdoors, to to feel part of nature. And I think that it's just something that we all, we all have within us that we, we've always we've got a connection with nature, with the outdoors. And in Scotland, in Fife, we live in a really beautiful part of the world but actually a lot of people in this country and in, in, in Fife as well don't, don't realise how beautiful a place we live in uh, we, we actually have to, to live in a lot of people go on holidays abroad and things in the summer or have in the past and maybe this this year has been an opportunity for people to actually realise what's on their on their doorstep and actually discover Scotland and I mean I've been exploring Scotland for the last three and a half years in terms of driving around different parts of it and hiking and things um, but there's still so much for me to explore I'm not even really kind of scratch the surface with with what Scotland has has to offer yeah, I often say to a lot of people, if you're going out training, do not wear earphones. It's <laughs> the worst thing you could ever do because you're just creating a, 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 almost a false high through the music you're listening to, whereas you should really be actually relaxing while you're exercising. Um, and it's the engagement with nature that actually helps you do that. And, and it, it keeps your mental well-being, doesn't it? 
Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think yeah, that, that's... I would say that straight up. I think for a lot of people, um, people like listening to music when they're outdoors and stuff. But me personally, um, I like the idea that I can just like maybe turn my phone on to airplane mode. Um, I'm not listening to music. I'm just I'm just out in the hills enjoying the countryside. There was a I remember there was a point uh, a year or so ago I was out hiking in, in Glen Shee with my friend Megan, and I remember there was a point where it was up a hill and you're so far away from the traffic. There wasn't a wind, and it was just silent. And that's the first time in my life I've ever heard absolute silence and no actual sounds anywhere. And it was such a beautiful thing to to experience. Um, and I think that, yeah, just getting out, switching off is, is a great thing for mental health and to, and to do it out, outdoors, obviously, is, is a great thing. I've often, I've often been walking the Fife Coastal Path and I've heard the bird singing. I've actually heard it. I've, I've felt myself thanking the bird <laughs> <laughs> for its song in the morning. <laughs> and, I'm, and then I'm thinking to myself, Jim, are you nuts? <laughs> no, that's a great thing. No, I think with nature and with, with animals as well, and when you mentioned birds and bird noises, I mean, uh, earlier at, at this summer, like once the lo- lockdown restrictions lifted and we could travel a bit, I was... Uh, I remember I was out hiking with uh, my friend Anna um, in Glen Etive. We were doing a sunrise walk up a Munro next to Ben Starav. And <laughs> just when you said about the birds, the birds' noise, um, I remember there was actually like the, the stags were rutting. That was their, their sound. It was really cool. So I'd never heard that sound before. Um, it was quite a little bit of a scary sound to hear because they're obviously quite close to us. We were going up in the dark and all you're hearing is this loud noise of the stags. But it's, no, it's a beautiful thing to, to go out and ex- experience the, the, the countryside. And, yeah, listen to the birds, listen to the, the deer, all the animals and things that, um, that are out in, in Scotland. So you talked about Munro bagging. So, you know, where are you in your, in your challenge then? Are you, are you, do you want to do the whole lot of them? Yeah, definitely. I think once I got, once I realised that how much I enjoyed hill walking and Munro bagging, once, it wasn't something I initially thought. I think that once I did 10, 20, I was sort of looking like, yeah, I'm doing quite a lot of these um not pretty easily, but um, in a short period of time, I did quite a lot. So I kind of realised at that point, yeah, I want to, I want to do all the one rows. That'd be, a, that'd be a great, a great thing to, to do, and not just for the achievement of doing it, but to see different parts of Scotland that I hadn't seen before. There's a great opportunity to mm-hmm. do that one row bagging. And um, just now, I'm on 180, 182. So there's wow. exactly 100 to go. So yeah, over over three and a half years since I've got into it, I'm averaging over a one row a week. Um, I think roughly so. Um, or something around that. So yeah, next next year potentially I could hopefully do them all. It just depends, obviously, with the uh, travel restrictions and things how that how that plays into it. Yeah, because I think when I saw in one of your videos, you were at number eighty, um, and you know before, and uh, and I'm thinking, wow, so you've done a hundred since then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it just, do you think it becomes addictive? What sorry? Do you think it becomes addictive? Oh, def- yeah, I think, but a good in a, in a, in a good way, because um, it's it's so good for your mental health, your physical health, and yeah, as, as soon as you do one, you you got that objective one weekend to get up to one Munro, and then once you've done that, you get down, you're like, oh, what am I going to go into next? And it, it becomes like obviously a lot of people, including myself, um, in, in the past, like say things like with football, you get into a, a habit, a routine of going to the football every weekend, and I guess the the mine's mine has been over the last three and a half years is that I've gone into a routine of. I'll go and hill walking every weekend, but it's, uh, no, it's uh, yeah, it, it definitely becomes becomes addictive, but it's uh, in, in a good way, hopefully. Yeah, and there's 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 Dext as well, eh? You know, when, I mean, I've got some, I think I've got some photographs of Dext here, or just a <laughs> wee blast in here. So there's Dext, you know, uh, you know, um, absolutely wonderful dog, eh? Yeah. What, is, what ages you now, or is it he, he or she? It's he. He's, he's ten yeah. now. I would, I would say Dex is, is. There's only one picture there. Of Dex. He's in the bottom left with the uh-huh. with the hill the, that Sleek and Wester Ross in the background. So he's the one that's kind of proudly on that bit of yeah. rock. There. Yeah. He's he's ten years old. He uh, he's actually laying in the bed just now having a, having a wee sleep. Yeah. When I first went to to Monroe Baggins, so he was like six or seven at that point. So we. Uh, I remember. <laughs> I think about Ben Honsey. That was the first Monroe that he did, and I remember taking him and thinking. Like he's a Westie. I've taken him on, on long walks and stuff before, but like obviously mountains are completely different. And I, in my head, I thought, right, I'll take him for half an hour and see if he gets on. And um, but he, he was totally fine. And then we kept we kept going, and I kept thinking, right, well, I'll turn well, I'll turn back. Um, but he was the one. Like it's it's hard to believe being a Westie. Um, but he was the one like far ahead of me. Like I, I'd have him in the lead because there's there's sheep and things about as well. So um, he'd be on the lead. So but, if, but it was almost like having a husky. He was the one that I was on. I was on to keep up with him. It was pretty incredible. So we did did Ben Honsey, and then we did other kind of like kind of shorter, kind of more straightforward Munros, 
and um, and then I, I just realized that he was completely unfazed by them he really enjoyed it it was a great thing for me and him to get into the, the hills together I actually got a bit of, um obviously a bit of a bond as well i think from from going outdoors um you, you kind of build up here i mean i've always had a, a bond with him he's my, he's my dog but i think actually doing like the munros and things kind of brings you a little bit closer as well um and yeah he loved it so He's done 62 Munros and um, he's now, he's 10 wow. he in, in November. So I think kind of over the last year and a bit, I've just sort of slowed him down with stuff. So now we'll just do the five fills together. I, I wouldn't take him up uh, Munros. I just feel like obviously as he's getting older and um, we've, we've had Wes's in the family before and you sort of like recognize kind of older dog traits and things on him. So um, yeah. he, he started doing like the, the smaller hills now, but no, he's every one of those, 62 Monroe's um, was a piece of cake from, him, um, which is hard to believe and hard for me to believe. I think initially when I first thought he won't be able to to do half an hour maybe, but um, yeah, absolutely loved them. It reminds me a bit like going Oaks. Do you remember John Oaks and Shep the dog? I don't. Oh, are you too young? <laughs> <laughs> is it just me? <laughs> well, John Oaks used to be on Blue Peter, and he had Shep the dog. So what John Noakes did, he did go with Noakes, where him and Shep went through various challenges right throughout the UK about different things they would get involved in. And he used to take Shep up the hills and everything and then and in treacherous conditions. And he was always going on about, you know, his, his catchphrase was, get, get down, Shep, because <laughs> Shep <laughs> always jumped on everybody. Um, but but for the older generation, we'll all remember that, but you will obviously not. But, but if you get a chance, Google it. It's a fantastic uh, thing, and 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 I, I have a sneaking suspicion you and Dex could pull that off and have uh, and have uh, go with Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that would that would be that would be good fun to see that. Um, that'd be absolutely fantastic. You know, I, I, I look forward to a lot more of your posts. Uh, can we come to talk about Fife? I mean, what is it you love so much about Fife? Then I think that I mean, obviously. I've Born here, brought up here, um, it's my home. So I, I just, I think I feel like a strong attachment to anybody just being, being my home region. Um, and I think, I think like from like through life and stuff, I'm, I'm a big cow and beef supporter. And um, I remember um, kind of growing up in things when people talk about Central Park. I don't know if you've been to Central Park yourself. The cow right, the stock car. <laughs> yeah, I think because of, because of that, because of the stock car track and stuff around it, because of the fence and things, it was always a stadium that I felt from other football supporters when I spoke to them, they'd always talk it down and say it was really horrible and stuff. Um, but like I've always loved Central Park and so like to kind of counter so to kind of counter that to try to show people how much I really loved it was that I made a, a short document documentary at university for my masters um, called When the Sun Shines, which you can find on, on YouTube. And that was sort of like me trying to show other people like why I really love Central Park and and why it means a lot to a lot of people. And like with Fife as well, there's people that I think people like in other parts of Scotland um, love love coming to Fife. But there's there's people I think sometimes there's like a reputation sometimes that Fife like there's some negative things about Fife for for example um, that's that's not that great a place or whatever. But I love Fife. I think it's great. And thought so. I think that getting out and about and exploring Fife and kind of showcasing it and all the really beautiful parts of Fife isn't is one of the most beautiful regions in Scotland. You've got the Lowman Hills. You've got the hill walking element of it. Um, the Fife Coastal Path, there's lots of great country walks as well, and um, woodland walks, and there's lots of like, great sites as well, like, say, like the Bunnett Stain, uh, John Knox's Pulpit, lots of really like, be like beauty spots that can, I think as well from myself experience of doing the Munros, I know that from my experience of doing some Munros, there's definitely hills in Fife that are a better day out than some yeah. Munros that I've done, and so you get some better, um, better views as well. So Fife, um, I think, really punches above its weight in terms of what it's got to offer in terms of outdoor spaces for people. I, I just, I, I really, I'm doing my best to try to showcase that to people and to show that Fife is... Well, I can see that because I looked at your one on Bonata Hill and I couldn't believe it. We'll play that just now. ...incredible outdoor spaces, making the region one of the most beautiful in Scotland. But the best view, in my opinion, is from Bonata Hill. I mean, I, I, that's an amazing hill. From the Gaelic to mean the high hill, Benarte, which is the kingdom's second highest hill by prominence, is a short day out by hill walking standards. The view north from just beyond the summit reveals the incredible sight of Loch Leven, Scotland's largest lowland loch. The craggy north face plunges down to reveal the beauty and flatness of the loch and provides a real feeling of space. 
And beyond in all directions are mountains and hills, with Bishop Hill, one of the woman's the most distinguished. On a clear enough day, many of roads to the north and west will also be visible. That's an amazing view, eh? This as the sleeping giant and decide for yourself if it is indeed the best viewpoint in the kingdom of faith. Well, like some of those shots again, um, <clears throat> Gavin Hugh from the Jubilee Media got got those those shots as a kind of credit there. Uh, yeah, Bernard, I think that so at going into this year, so obviously before the pandemic, and um, with the last um, couple two and a half years before that, for example, doing the Munros, I'd just be focused on doing the Munros. So uh, there's no Munros in Fife, so um, I'd really be focused on other parts of Scotland. And earlier this year, even I suppose before before the pandemic started, there was a, quite a few storms in the weekends when I was going to be out. Um, Monroe bagging up in north of Scotland. So because of the storms over a couple of weekends, I thought, right, I'm just going to see what's on my doorstep. And one of the hills I went up was was Benarty Hill. And I was I was blown away. I couldn't believe I'd not been up that hill before. Obviously, I've been focused on doing the Monroes. But Benarty up by Vane Farm then? Yeah, it's just to the south of Vane Farm. So the, I mean, the, the way I've always went up it is from the other side, kind of towards Locker Meadow, which kind of go through Bellingry and take uh -huh. your first right from the kind of Glenrothes side coming into it. And there's like a, a parking bit up there, and uh, yeah, so it was one that I knew my, my granda, um, who, who passed away about four years ago. He, I know that he'd been up there a few times, and that was one of his favorite hills. But I just never had the opportunity to go up. And when I went up, like I said, I just couldn't believe how, how beautiful it was. Not just when you got to the summit and you can see around the kind of panoramic of the area, but then if you go that a little bit further and go over that little fence, and you're looking right down towards Loch Leven, Scotland's largest lowland loch, and Bishop Hill just just behind it, and Munro's in all different directions. Um, incredible! I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe I, I'd never been up there to, to see that, and I've been up um, about four or five times at least um, since that over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that takes us on to the ten, uh, five ten highest hills. You know, um, when we when we scroll through this West Lomond, I mean, that's a cracking hill. You know, up there. I mean, I tend to I tend to park at the east and then run, or or some people do off road mountain biking from the east to the west and back. Um, Although I've I've been up the top of West Lomond and then suddenly somebody comes cycling up, <laughs> I'm thinking, how on earth did you get up here? <laughs> it's steep. I think yeah, people underestimate it for for steepness. Um, like pe again, people when they talk about hill walking or things, they don't think about Fife, but it's, Fife's got some great hills. And yeah, that list that I put that together last night because um, at the start of the year, and I suppose after the the lockdown and things as well, I was really interested to see what hills were on our doorstep in, in Fife. Fife and obviously I knew of the Loman Hills and uh, Bernard Hill at that point, but I was I was looking online. I couldn't find a list anywhere of like a top ten definitive yeah. list, and I thought, well, I I really like to to find out. So I, I looked into it and I looked at different sites, and I, I got this list together of, of the, the the ten, and I put it online yesterday. So hopefully, it inspires a lot of people to get into. And obviously, if you click on the the names, um, you can it takes you to a link to open up like the walking route to to do it. So this was something I really would have really loved at the start of the year to to get into. It. So at least people having this now especially now that more people are seeing things on their doorstep um, yeah. and and um, hopefully that inspires people to maybe think about doing all 10 at some point this year that would be a great objective i mean there's to... knock hill i mean knock hills well knock hills renowned with the racing um, <laughs> that, that's why i used to go to knock hill um, but i never really realized that there was a hill there if that makes sense even though it's called <laughs> knock hill <laughs> hello the clues in the name <laughs> That, that was, I mean, I, I just you mentioned the names there. Um, another thing as well, I, I got in touch with Gaelic and Fife, uh, Kirsty Strachan from, from Gaelic and Fife, and I kind of just made a suggestion because from doing all the Munros and, and things, obviously, all the, the, the Munros are, are Gaelic names, and I'd made the suggestion to Kirsty of what we, we did something where we got local school kids to, to make a, a Gaelic name for the Fife Hills, and she, she said, Well, actually, all the names in Fife, the Fife Hills, come from Gaelic. Um, and so we got talking about it and then I made that made a video that got quite a good a good response where we explain the different meanings of the hills and so knock hill actually means hell hill because it comes from the Gaelic uh, knock or I can't remember how to pronounce it properly but knock wow. okay. which means hell so on a map it would just be in knock on on a map and then someday it's been anglicised it would just make it knock hill and then it's just become knock hill so it just means hell hill um, yeah. so where's sailing hill where's that Salad yeah Salon's in the west so, Salon's actually, you can do Salon Hill and uh, Knock Hill together. And there's like quite a big drop off between them, but you, you do that, it's kind of like a big a big circuit. So it's kind of like in, in the west of Fife, just north of Dunfermline. Okay. And we've got Bonatti Hill, which is the one we saw in the video. Larga Law. See, Larga Law has got to be a staple for me because it's right on my doorstep. It's a, it's a good one for me personally for running. I tend to run up. I, I 
I before my injury, I'm I'm getting over it now in rehabilitation. But I, you know, I used to do a lot of hill running. So you know, I was up the the Clough, uh, Ben Clough uh, over in uh, Alva. Um, Largo was always a staple for me, just to run up and run back down. Um, it was a good five kilometres um, if you go up and round by the fields. Um, but it's, it's stunning views when you get to the top of Largo Law. Yeah, well, I suppose what sets Largo Law, Largo Law apart from the other five hills of the of the of the, of the kind of, in the top ten is that yeah, it's right on the coastline really, and um, you've got a beautiful view right down the, the five coastal path and in, in, in different directions, east and west, and then looking across the fourth um, as well. But you've got a nice really cool view looking right back into Fife as well across the countryside, looking towards the Loman Hills and um, to Norman's Law. Um, yeah. yeah, it's... it's the back of you, you see Dundee and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, so it's just a, a, a brilliant a brilliant viewpoint and just, yeah, it's a great... It's, yeah, it's, it's... What I think is really good about the Fife Hills as well is that they're a lot more accessible than other hills in other parts of Scotland. Like, you could take your kids up Largo Law. I mean, it, depending on their age, um, obviously, and things, but it's not out, out of reach for people to do these sorts of hills and to get the kind of views you can get from the, from the top of them and particularly uh, Largo one Law. Of, one of the things I I, I, um, I take an analogy to Largo Law is just when you think you're at the top, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> There's another hill to climb. <laughs> you just think that's it, I've done it, and then you, oh, no, no, another one. And 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 to me, a Largo Law is a bit like an analogy of life. It's just like, just as you think you're at the top of something, it's like, or not, you've got another one to go. Um, and and that kind of that kind of sums up Largo Law for me. But once you get to the top, it's glorious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it's yeah that, that wee drop off um, as well because I think it used to be a, a volcano, so that's why it's kind of got the two sides to. Yep, and an active volcano years ago. Um, it's a glorious place, Norman's Law. And um, so, where's Norman's Law about for the people that don't know? That's do, 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 is that Luthery? Um, yeah, next yeah you park in Luthery. It's a village, so it's kind of in, in the north of Fife. It might be the most northerly of the these ten hills in, in Fife. Yep. Brilliant viewpoint. Um, what I loved about this one is that you're walking through a farm to get to, and I hadn't done done it before until um till this year, and walking through the farm, and I wasn't really kind of sure what what to expect, how it was going to look. Sometimes the hills are just kind of the high point in a in a field almost. Sometimes it doesn't it doesn't feel that dramatic, but I loved this when I kind of came around the corner and I saw this view of like the craggy. This kind of what would be the east face, craggy east face of of Norman's Law. It just it looks beautiful. It's a it's a stunning hill, and then this, it's not as intimidating as it looks. You can kind of go up the left a little bit, and up the slope, up to the top. And once you get to the top, yeah, the views over to Dundee in particular are really good. Back towards the the Loman Hills, and it's called Norman's Law, but it's um, in the 12th century, up to the 12th century, um, it was called Dunmore, which is Gaelic for the Great Fortress, and um, it used wow. to be used by the Picts as a I think it was the Picts anyway as a as a fortress. And then once you get to the top, there's uh, the old kind of the bricks and and things from from an old fort. So I think similar to I don't know if you ever up to East Lowland, but there's like a sign on East Lowland at the 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 car park up there, and it shows what East Lowland used to look like as a as a hill fort. And um, so obviously the Kingdom of Fife, it was where the, the Picts had had their own kingdom. It was his own, not I wouldn't say a country, but yeah. like his own, the Kingdom of Fife. That's where that's where it all comes from. Yeah, the Kingdom of Fife. Most important yeah. thing in Scotland, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, and uh, now, how do you say this, Lumbeni? Lumbeni Hill, yeah. Um, now, this one, this is probably the one that I would, uh, I think, in terms of summit views, it's it's the least good because what you kind of can't see, the, the high point in that hill there, there's lots of trees, and then there's also like um, power lines that go through the, the summit. So once you get to the summit, it's a bit underwhelming because you can't see anything really, and uh, obviously the big power lines. But the walk through Pit Maiden Forest, which I think is technically in Perth and Kinross, but the the walk through Pit Maiden Forest is beautiful, and that's uh, a really a really popular area for for uh, um, cycling and for dog walks and things. So that's a really that's a really good walk. But maybe the summit is a bit underwhelming compared to the rest of the of the. I, I tend to like the forest because the forests are, are are more engaging. They keep your mind more active because there's more things to 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 be engaged with round about you. You know, and and especially if you're doing if you're doing running, if you're doing off road running, um, it tends to be more. You know, you've got all these hilly terrains, and you could, you know, it's it's the old thing about the wee adrenaline rush that you could fall a trip at any time, and it's just that excitement, and it gives you as a result of that, and and that's what probably that's what probably gets me into running, um, and especially up hills and in countryside. And yeah, with the main forest, there's the trails there are brilliant. Like there's a track you can walk that I think used for for cars and things going up, but. Um, even if you go off the track and go through like the the walking routes and things through the forest, they're really well made. They're not really like usually when you go through forest, they're 
muddy and boggy and things, but it's a really well kept uh, forest. So yeah, I'd recommend it. So it's a good one. Just maybe not the the viewpoint. Uh, Give me help. Yep, that is is it Colesi? I think it is where you park there to go up that one. Yep. Yeah, that's really, that's a really nice one. That's um, <clears throat> again, it's similar to Lumbeni in the in the sense that there's a few trees at the top, so it's it's not brilliant in terms of a viewpoint, but it's a nice walk. You're walking for a good bit through um, through some beautiful countryside. You can mm-hmm. see in the background, you can see uh, one of the Lomond Hills and um, beyond. So it's uh, yeah, so it's, it's a really good walk and just the the top. Um, I, I, I can assume Dex liked it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's loving it. He's loving it. that's that's the rock when you when, you know you, when you get to the top because there's that that kind of like a, a small boulder that's at the top that that Dex is is standing on there. That's when you know you've you've reached the top. And finally, Mount Hill. Uh, now this is on the way out to Newborough, possibly. Uh, yeah, just get, just a little bit to the southeast of it. Um, it's sort of between Norman's yeah. Law. It's it's quite close to Norman's Law. It's just a, it's like just kind of to the south of Norman's Law. Um, yeah, it's but it's a, it's a good it's a good one. Um, once you get to, again, once you get to the top, there's lots of trees as you can see that kind of block the summit. But there's that huge is it Hope Town monument i think it is um it's pretty massive and you can see that that monument from uh tens of miles away if you're up the, the loman hills you can you can spot it pretty clearly even though you're you're a good bit away i've seen it i've seen it a few times um i tried to get a drone up there but for some reason it just wouldn't go high enough um, <laughs> to you know to, to have a look at it from afar and just yep. uh, circle around it um yeah so you know that's the hills um so can we cover the one of the most my, my most uh exciting bits is the Fife Coastal Path. Uh, is, uh, the Fife Coastal Path is unbelievable. So I'm going to see if I could pop on to that um, and we'll just play this wee video. I think you've got a wee video here, haven't you? Of the Fife Coastal yeah. Path. Yeah, my favourite part of it. Yeah. Got my wee now. <laughs> oh, get some sound on. That would help you. Yeah. I'll just start that again. Give me two seconds. It's okay. Yeah, that's my favourite part of the coastal path. The Fife Coastal Path is one of Scotland's classic long distance walking routes. Like the Carden and Newborough, there are 150 miles of stunning scenery encompassing the entirety of the Kingdom's coastline. But which section is best for a half day's exploring? Here is my choice. Let's walk from Anstruther to Creel. That's a fantastic walk. Yeah, I've done. I've not done the whole um, coastal path, but I've done quite a few sections of it, and that was definitely my favourite. I've done that two or three times now. Again, this is all from this year. I hadn't done any of the coastal path before, and um, this year, just like wow. Um, and that's there's so many elements. I mean, as I described in the video, you've got the the coves, which are like the, the kind of the rock cave structures that are there. That beautiful view once you get to the end of it from the Anstruther other side to Crail well, Crail Harbour, and then you. Um, been down to Crail Harbour for, for a wee explore there as well and the views across the Isle of May, uh, Bass Rock, North Berwick as well and um, yeah just that's the, that's the best part and best section of it in my opinion. Views across the board to the Isle of May and to Bass Rock, beautiful beaches and the stunning sight of one of Scotland's most picturesque fishing villages. At the end of the route you may wish to walk into Crail it's well worth a look around, including exploring Creel Harbour. And then you can do it all over again for the return route with the added bonus of a chippy in Anstruther after a day exploring. A That's a big thing. You got a long walk to do it. I'm trying to walk. And then there's the chippy at the, the, at the end to, to come back to it. So good. It's a good one. Actually, that walk, funnily enough, um, I think it was last week won the the award. I think it was was it the Witch um, website and um, got people voted that as the be- the best walk in all of Scotland. That that part of the the Fife Coastal Path was the best in all of Scotland. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not shocked. You know, it's a it's a regular running route. I tend to park in Ely and then I'll run over to Anstruther and run back. Um, and you take into Newark Castle, you know, St Monan's Kirk, um, the windmill, the salt pans, and everything like that as well. You know, so that's what I love about that that route. And then you know, as you as you said yourself, I, I you know I I decided one day that I tell you what I'll just run around to St Andrews from Anstruther. 
bloody 18 miles later. That must be good. That must be good. That must be a great route. All uh, right. Well, 18 miles later and sore legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it would be an easy gig, and then I got round to Kings Barns, and uh, and it was like, whoa, this is a lot different to what the coastal path at the front is. Um, but the spectacular views as you go around Creole Golf Course. You know, on that on that edge, and and just overlooking the the North Sea and everything like that, that it's just glorious, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned Ely. Ely is a beautiful place. That's somewhere I've been to quite a few times. And obviously, like Ladies Tower there, the walk around there is a, a beautiful one. Um, and then the Ely Chain Walk. I did, I've done that. I think I did that last year for the first time. I've done it again this year. And it's just something I'd, I would never have thought like Fife, Fife would have. It wasn't something I, I was aware of. And once you do it, you're like, well, this is, this is great. This is it's something so different to what I've done, done before in such a beautiful location as well to do the kind of scrambling up the chains there. I'm amazed at the barracks and the, the old gun towers and battalion division, you know, on the on the top of Ely yeah. Point, where the actually in the in the war they actually protected the coastline and they stopped, you know, um all these all, all the enemy boats coming up. Um it's just it's just amazing to see all that. Now I don't know about you, but I, I have lived here all my life. I am now 54 year old and only in the last four or five years I've realized that this stuff's on my doorstep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same like I said that this this year um, I just really hadn't really discovered that much of Fife at all, and this this year I've just been absolutely blown away with what we've what we've what we've got here, and just the range of stuff um, as well. We're just we're we're really lucky to to live in such a, a beautiful region. We really, really are. Absolutely. So um, to finalise, you know, you know, Ross, you've set up all this uh, information for people, and really, it's it's to, it's probably as well to help people overcome uh, a, you know depression uh, to a degree. I mean, that's why you've done it in the beginning. So you've got your you've got your website, which is Mountain Men's Minds, Mountains Men's Minds, Mountain Men's Minds. social media page, and then you've probably got your YouTube channel as well, haven't you? Uh, yeah, got them. Yeah, so there's, uh, I think this year, yeah, so, so no, so this year, it was just a few weeks ago when I set up the Ross Cunningham hike in for, for Facebook, I just realised that there was a quite a few like different videos and pictures that I quite fancied sharing. So there's quite a few different things where... I'll go out there to try and inspire people. And like with these videos I've been making the last few weeks, like with the coastal path, like with the the Narty, the Narty Hills one that, you, that you've shown, it's just to try to show people visually what, what there is and to try and make them quite short as well, like kind of one minute, two minute videos that hopefully somebody watches in a, in a short, in, in a couple of minutes and then they're hope, hopefully inspired or at least encouraged to, to at some point go out and explore what, what we've got in Fife. So finally, then, what would you, what advice would you give people, you know, that are going through this, that are going through depression and stuff like that? What advice would you give them, a, y- a young person today? Because it, 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 I've come from a generation where it was taboo to talk about it. You know, basically, you didn't talk about it. You were a man, you were strong, and if you talked about it, you were weak, and you were, you know, you were basically pushed to the side. And so that's my generation I've come from. So, but what would, what would, what should, we, what should a young person do? To, I think like two two things, uh, well maybe three things actually. What one thing is to like open up about it. So like whether it's like, a friend or a family member or something, I think that is is quite hard to take that step and to say to somebody, look, I'm struggling, and um, just to, and just to talk about it. And once you've maybe kind of gone from there, the second thing would be to to seek support, speak to like your GP, look online as well, like Sam H and um, Scotland's National uh, Mental Health Charity got a great website and have lots of great tips for for what to do to help your 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 mental health um as well and, and maybe point in the direction of maybe speaking to somebody about it. There's obviously the Samaritans helpline that's that's a really good thing as well. And yeah, I guess obviously I'm, I'm sitting here and preaching outdoors as well. I think for me, as I've discussed, it gave me a, a focus, maybe feel better. Once you do exercise, it releases endorphins. It makes you just feel a little bit happier. It helps you clear your head. What I really like to be hill walking is that when when I'm walking in the hills and you get to the top of a hill and you're looking out on on a stunning site, whether it's one of the Monroes or Benarty Hill or Largo Law, um, it just gives you a different perspective. It makes you kind of think of things a little bit differently. Maybe if you're sitting at home and obviously we've had the lockdown and you're sitting at home, things can maybe sometimes kind of build up in your mind a bit more than they should be. And once you kind of get outside and go for a walk, you just feel that feel that a little bit better. So I just, I, I think there's quite a good campaign that thinks paths for all with Sam H are doing um, through January is to encourage everybody to get out at least once a day to go for a walk, whether it's half an hour um, around your local area or, or up a hill or, or something or along the coastal path. So I've just encouraged people to try to maybe maybe to do that. Just every day, just think, I'm just going to get out for half an hour. And I, I, 
in most cases, once you go out for that half an hour and you come back, you'll feel that a little bit better about things. It isn't easy in the beginning, is it? Really, it's you know you, you've almost got to force yourself to do it because you, you, if you're in that state of mind, you don't want to do it. That's true. Oh yeah, definitely. And like I said, there's there's times even like when um, initially when I was going up Monroe's and I just turned back, I just, I'm not feeling this. And there's times that period as well, when I was going to the gym, I'd sit down at, um, at some weights or something, ready to do it, walk there, ready to do it. And then when I kind of sat down, I just felt, I'm not feeling this. I just like, I, and when you feel like I can't, you feel like you can't do it, you just, you can't do it and you, just, you kind of go, go home. But um, if you kind of feel- that's like, okay, isn't it? That's okay. The key is not to beat yourself up mentally and say because you can't do it that's the wrong thing it's uh, it's okay not to be okay you know that's the reality so you know I, I think it's just take a step back isn't it take a step back and just you know tomorrow's another day but don't beat yourself up about it yeah and not to be too hard on yourself that's maybe a big thing i'm guilty of is that i can be really really hard on myself for for things so just uh yeah if you if you're not feeling feeling like you're, you're up to doing it one day that's totally fine and um, maybe yeah like you say maybe the next day um, but also important things alongside trying to get some exercise is to try to be open about it with, with other people, whether it's yeah, a, a pal, a member of your family, even some somebody you work beside or something that you can trust, just to try to be a little bit open if, if you are going through a hard time. And this year, like <laughs> we've all got license to um to to think to, to to feel that we're going through like a really hard time and to be struggling mentally. It's, it's been a it's been a horrible year um for for a lot of people. So there's uh, there's no shame at all in opening up and just saying I'm struggling. And then it is a case of speak to your doctor. I mean, I, I know, you know, he, he's maybe watching. But I know, I've, I've told him time and time again, go and speak to your doctor. And they keep saying to me, you know, I'll do it in the new year. I'll do it in the new year. And it's like, will you please, because I know I can see it in you, go and speak to your doctor. But there's a there's this old thing about the doctor's going to put me on drugs and he's going to, and I'm going to be zonked out. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to, you know, that's what his perception is. And it's like, wait a minute, that, it's there to help you. <laughs> it's there to help you recover. It's not there to. It's not there to put you on the back burner. Yeah, and just yeah, just to kind of obviously trust trust the medical professionals, I, I guess, and yeah, just I suppose that people can just kind of try to bottle up and just try to like you're saying put things off maybe or whatever. But just if you're if you're struggling, just try and be open about it and do it and do it as quickly as possible because you'll you'll feel better about it. Yeah. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Ross. I appreciate your time today and uh, and everybody else for watching. Thanks very much for watching and uh, and we'll see you next time.